So I always look forward to voting. I registered yesterday to vote. I've always had good grades, and it was kind of easy just to pass classes. I never stressed about if I'm going to get it to graduation. I just kind of always, and I was really good at kind of just getting through essays <laughs> until I met Mr. Fossa. Yeah. <laughs> he saw through my BS and my fancy vocab and he was really pushed me to actually not just accept my good essays and go past that. <laughs> so senior year, I've been in crazy meetings with Pedicone and stuff that I never thought I would ever have to experience at 17, 16 years old. <laughs> And um, I've had friends, like students, who tell me they haven't eaten in two, three days because they're so stressed that they don't sleep. And it's just like, this is stuff that you watch in like a movie on Lifetime. <laughs> I never thought that I'd be a part of it. And then I think, like, speaking in front of people, like, I never thought I'd be able to do that, like, especially for something like this. And. Um, it's kind of surreal to think that you see pictures of Chicanos in the 1960s in front of 1010, and then you think, I was there Tuesday, like, I'm part of that too, so it's very surreal, <laughs> it's humbling, and it definitely shook up senior year as so unhappy, so <laughs> it's something I'm going to be telling my children. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just really feel strongly about this, and I, uh, I, I feel, I feel like, cause I, last year I didn't take the, which is normally when you take Mexican American history or any other state courses, I didn't take that, so I'm practically taking all of the Chicano classes this year, and like it's all been cut in half, more than half, cause the government piece is going on right now, so I'm definitely feeling really robbed of what I was really waiting for since my freshman year when my brother started taking these classes and was like, you know, really happy and just seeing the community and, and uh, the teachers and the, the enthusiasm and everything is just... So I was really looking forward to that. And with that possibility gone, it's just... all oh, man. It's really, really sad. Yes? Can you tell me what, what happened on Wednesday in your classes? Like, how did you Last week, uh, Dr. Morado came in and talked to us uh, um, in all of, our, all of our classes, I believe. And on Wednesday, nothing happened. Nothing was new. We were all very anxious, I believe, because we were all waiting for someone to walk in and start, you know, giving the teachers, you know, new curriculum and uh, just start uh, looking over the classes and make sure, making sure we're not being bad. But uh, also, like we've, we've just been anxious all week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And finally on Friday, people from, from our school did come in and start taking the books, which was very disheartening. <laughs> just watching them box them all up is very, uh, definitely Nazi Germany-like. And uh, who's to say when they get, I don't know, I don't know, who's to say that when they, when they got, get boxed up, um, that they don't, you know, disappear and get burned in some back alley. And they did that while you were in class? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, and um, I know in, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. In Mr. Ross's class, they took it during first period. And in Acosta's, I believe they took it during fourth. And those were both Latino literature classes. I mean, Latino and the Mexican Latin history classes, so. So, did they explain to you what they were doing? Were you prepared for that? No, they just Some came in and just... Guys just come in and start yeah. boxing up books? Did any of you ask questions? Did no, it just happened. It just wow. happened. Wow. Who <laughs> uh, I was told it was the English department head in our, in our school that took all the books, and she was directed to do that. Year, I attended University High School, so, like, that's where I first... Um, went through like racism, you know. I would ask for help and teachers wouldn't help me 
and then once I came to Tucson High, which I was so happy, like Tucson High, I love it because I'm, I'm treated like a human. And so in these classes, like, I, UHS is so easy compared to like Mr. Acosta's class. Like he makes sure that you learn, like you can't just get by, you have to make sure you know it, you have to be able to present, like you have to be confident in yourself. That's what we learn is to like, confident in yourself when you're talking to people. And also with Miss Federico on Friday, when she was saying how she didn't know like what she was going to do and stuff and how she had to do American history, she said she was going to be teaching us the AP American history so that we're prepared for college like we would have been with the Chicano studies. So like it's equal to an AP class because we're really both like um, we're just pushed really hard. And um, and then another thing that I wanted to say, which I think is funny how like they're taking away all our classes and stuff, but of course I got um, teacher of the year. So it's like, how can you be doing this when he's getting teacher of the year? And then um, the last thing I wanted to, wanted to say is just that the community and the parents really need to be involved. Like the students are up there and we're talking, but like we need to be making sure that the teachers are I mean that the parents are involved because they're really looking at you guys too and we just need support whenever we do something we need the support of everybody because we're all one community and we all are in this fight together. And I'm a junior at Tucson High and um, I'm currently taking uh, Mexican, uh, American history through a Hispanic perspective and um, before the class I, uh, my brother's really active in the community and for um, fighting for basic rights and educational rights. And I uh, I never really listened to anything because I kind of just thought, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm Mexican-American, I'm, I'm part of something. When, um, when really I wasn't very educated and um, after taking these classes, um, I realized that there's a lot that we can do as students to um, to speak out and to fight for what we believe in. Advance, like it's so diverse, but no matter what color you are, black, white, red, brown, purple, whatever, they're just so accepting. Ever since me and my mom moved here from Oklahoma, we really have embraced the culture. You know, it's kind of like we've adapted to our surroundings for in the positive sense. Like I'm always dancing folklorico, I'm always speaking in Spanish. <laughs> I didn't speak any Spanish before I got here. I um. I always had a thing for Mexican girls. I think that's one of the things that I wanted to speak Spanish for because I'm like a big time flirt. My first real girlfriend was um, Mexican and so I just admired how she would speak it with her grandma and she would speak it with her, her mother and I was just like, you know, I wish I could do that. So I thought, Hispanic studies, that must be Spanish studies. I'm studying the Spanish language. <laughs> and I'm like, no one's speaking Spanish in here. You're just talking about consciousness and indigenous people and stuff. And I'm like, what's going on? What is meant by a social construct? Something society's made. Something society's made. That's a social construct. Race is a social construct. Do y'all get that? Consciousness is a really big part of the Chicano Studies class. You know, knowing your surroundings, knowing what's going on in the world, not just not just your own neighborhood, not just your barrio, but like what's going on everywhere. Okay, so we're on the west side of the campus. The um, African American students, they stay posted on the, on the side of the gymnasium. We have um, some of the south side gang, they stay on the squares. The west side. West side is, we have the west side gang at this tree right here. And then we also have the jocks, some of the preps, the Abercrombie and Fitch wears, and people of that sort. Up here under the Ramada, there's it's generally the, the white tables. We go from the west side of campus to the east side of campus. It gets lighter and lighter skin. One of our key research questions is what factors help maintain our segregation as to like our family or whether we just wake up in the morning going, hey, I'm going to sit with black kids today. These classes make you think kind of outside of the box. It makes you think critically. In every other class, I mean, you're just thinking about Oh, let's get this work done. Let's just get this work done. But in this class, like, there's meaning to that work. You know what I mean? Tell me why are these again in your own words? Why are counter narratives important for historically oppressed communities? I guess I should start by saying that the teacher makes all the difference. 
And um, I've been to 10 different schools in my academic career. <laughs> and um, one of the high schools that I went to was CDO. And um, I have a pretty good perception of the different kinds of schools in Tucson, as far as a school that's in Oro Valley and was surrounded by golf courses and resorts and hotels and Tucson High, which is surrounded by federal state buildings and, you know, things like that. And um, for myself, I've, I've never experienced any kind of prejudice. I've never experienced any kind of discrimination um, until I went to CDO. And going there, there was a very limited curriculum. You were an EP or you were not an EP, and that was it. And as far as, like, Spanish, for example, I had a really amazing teacher, um, Ms. Mayo, and Spanish was her first language, and um, she was a really great teacher, um, and they started doing budget cuts at my school, and there was two Spanish teachers, there was Ms. Mayo and there was Ms. Smith. Ms. Mayo got fired, <laughs> even though Spanish was her native language. She got fired from being a Spanish teacher. So that gave me one perspective on the school and the school board. And um, I heard about Latino literature the halfway through my junior year. And I begged my mom for me to go to Tucson High and take the class, and she finally gave in. And I just, I fell in love with my teacher. I fell in love with the class. And um, these classes do promote a sense of family. And you become connected to your teachers. And I, you know, I consider my teachers like my theos and my theos. And, you know, seeing, when I first heard about all the attacks that they were getting and all the hurtful things that people were saying about them, it really affected me. Whereas at any other school, at any other classroom, if I were to hear that, I'd feel upset, but not to that kind of degree where it was personal. And so, these classes are nothing without the teachers. The teachers are what made these classes. And it's theirs. They, theirs to share with us. It's something that they created for us to share with us. And if you have someone else teaching that, it doesn't make any sense. Yes, and I'm a senior at Tucson High. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that um, I want to thank all of you guys for being here because it means so much to you know us students and teachers as well because you guys are here to support all of us. And as well as what Juliana said, you know, like everyone has, you know, we have had hard times throughout the year, especially our last year. Um, you know, it, it's affected all of us and emotionally it's damaged us from hearing all this that's going on. It's gone by so fast, you know, and it's, it's um, heartbreaking for me to hear that, you know, some class that was so like, you know, life changing to other students from what I've heard from other students because I've known a lot of people throughout Tucson High for like many of years because of my, my siblings. Um, one of my brothers uh, graduated uh, in 2005 and he was never in these, interested in these classes because he wasn't really informed about what these classes were about. But until his senior year, he was telling me about what these classes, you know, he was telling me like, oh, well, you should join these classes and this and that. And they're really interesting, you should probably take them when you go to school. And I was like, well, you know, I'll look into it. And I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying, you know, I wasn't really aware. And then my sister went into school right after he graduated in 2006. She graduated in 2009, and throughout her high school years, her, her life was like a living hell because my sister, you know, she's had a hard time, you know, being the only girl child in the family. Um, you know, she, her junior year, she started learning in like all these classes. She learned about the classes. She went into Ms. Arcosas and Ms., Ms. Uh, you know, she met Ms. Federico sometimes, but she didn't have a class. And, you know, she kept telling me, right as soon as I, I went into my freshman year, she was still a senior. She kept telling me, stay in these classes are really important for you to learn. Whatever is, you know, it's really important that you learn whatever the teachers teach you. They'll treat you like an actual, like an actual person and they'll treat you like you mean something to them. So I never got what the, I never got the point which was like what she was trying to explain to me until I actually went into, you know, one of the classes. When I stepped into the class, I figured, you know, it'd be like any other ordinary class. And then, you know, I started meeting other people and uh, one of the persons I actually have known since freshman year is actually Nico. Um, me and Nico have gone since freshman year, we've been together, you know, we've known each other for a while. 
and you know he's actually one of been one of my motivations to go into the class. He's always like, hey, dude, you know you're gonna go into the class, this and that, and. I've always wanted to go to the class, so I started going to the classes, and you know we started, we had the same you know you know homework and this and that, and it got really interesting. All these books that I've been reading, it got to me you know like I wanted to read more and more, and I've never been a book reading person. That's just never been me. And actually, when I was a child, it just you know I started I loved reading books, and then. Like middle school, I just lost it completely. I didn't. I didn't want to do like homework. I didn't want to do this. I was too lazy, you know, to do anything. And then once I started getting into these classes, I started to realize Mr. Costa was like, you know, you need to get on top of things. You was like, you need to do this for you, not for anybody else. Like this is for this is your education. You need to take advantage of it right now when you have the chance, and you need to struggle because you need to struggle in life in order to succeed. And if that's what it takes, then you know, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to keep these classes, and this is what we're all here for. You know, and I, I hope that you guys are here in the struggle with us to you know fight for these classes because these mean so much to all of us. And um, you know, I I don't know where I'd be right now without these classes being here, my teachers being for me. Um, you know, they're if they're ever they're always there. You know, whenever we need them for anything, for any problems, any life situations, anything. You know that's really harmful to us and you know I just want to say that they're I mean everyone in the board like they're taking our chances away from yes. our future they're taking our chances away from what we want to succeed in what we want to learn about and how far we want to go in life and you know it's like I'm trying to hold it in like try not to cry but it just you know it really sucks because this is like gone way too like way too far and we need to stop this right now before it gets you know way too crazy because you know even even if we're high school students we're just we're here standing in front of you guys talking to you guys like you know like we're actual like a part of something of something big and this is where we're gonna go we're gonna be a part of something big even though we're starting off at high school students we have a chance to put forth our words and our voice and our spirit to keep fighting for what we believe in. And Senior at Tucson High. I'm currently taking Latino literature. And having Acosta as a teacher has been, uh, has really, it's really been a gift to me to experience the kind of classroom environment that we have because it's very special. We have all these different people that can come together and share one space and talk about whatever issues we have. And we have total freedom of speech there. And I feel like part of our rights are being stripped from us uh, by going into our classrooms, removing materials, uh, personally investigating our teachers and going after their lives to see if they've done anything illegal, if they've promoted us to take any kind of action <clears throat> that uh, goes against what Hoopenthal is trying to um, institute. And uh, my mom had mentioned uh, earlier that I did an interview yesterday with Kagan Nine News about ethnic studies. <laughs> and it was after I got the tip from Ricky that uh, our books had been, our classroom sets had been taken into storage from the school that I told my mom about it and I said that this this is wrong. How can this be happening? How can we how can they be doing this to us? Um, and I'm also a library aide in my school's library and I work personally with the librarians uh, and and we have a, uh, a list of textbooks that we have and things that can that uh, things that are taught for the different grade levels. And I asked them, I said, do you think that they will go after the remaining textbooks we have in our library? They said that they were fearful that that could happen, but um, we were assured that, um, that that they could not do that, at least they couldn't remove those books without a very long and lengthy process. Um, but it, that doesn't mean that we can teach them. So. For right now, we're in a very difficult situation. 
and during my interview I made so many points as to why we should keep these classes and then I was very disappointed to see that almost my entire argument had not made it onto the news. In fact, the only statement they had for me was saying that they expect our teachers to have new curriculum overnight. That was the only statement. I had an entire argument as to why these classes were so good for the community. The st statistics don't lie that the graduation rates are very high for students who take ethnic classes, who graduate high school, and then who go on to college. We've mentioned that it's been saving lives. It's, it's been saving people's identities, their cultures. I don't see what's wrong with teaching a part of history to the people. What is, why, why are we suddenly being targeted? I mean, I feel like they're scapegoating an already oppressed minority. And this is unjust. This is clearly unjust. And we have to fight this because it's, it's wrong. And we are all proof of what these classes have done to us. The, they've made us more motivated and inspired individuals. They pushed us to become activists, to fight for what we believe in. These are all great leadership skills, skills that are taught to, you know, advance society, to, to be the change that you want to see in the world. And yet, we are being oppressed. I, I can't, <coughs> I, w I won't accept this, and I don't think any of you should. No matter what ethnic background you are, no matter how long you've lived in Arizona, how long you've lived in Tucson, but right now we are all a community, and this is everyone's issue. This is not just Chicanos or, Chica or uh, Chicanos. This is everyone. So I urge everyone to take any action that they can and to help out. Okay. So I'm going to try my best not to repeat a lot of things because we all have the same things to say. But following what Nico said, um, when they did come in to take our books, it was we were in shock at first because we they like the department head also had our teachers be the ones to get them oh. to hand them off and everything like that. So it was very like it's just really just happening. They didn't have you know, the decency to like make sure we weren't there. So it was, it was very heartbreaking just to see a piece, like something like that happening in the middle of class. And it was kind of like, wow. Um, these classes, yeah, all these teachers, <coughs> like yourselves, Mr. Acosta, Ms. Federico, all of these ethnic studies teachers, they, they kick our butts into gear and make sure that we do exceed what we're what's expected of us. And it's very, very important to us, and not only us, there's many other students that couldn't make it today that feel that these classes deserve acknowledgement, deserve to be a part of the curriculum. And like standing up here right now, looking at everybody here that are in support of these classes, it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing just to know that, like I spoke to you um, the day of the board meeting, there's many people here that heard about these classes and are here in support that don't take these classes, that hear about the classes and think, well, this is wrong for what they're doing to it, to these classes. And it's heartbreaking to me that I found a place, hold on, I'm going to try it so hard. okay. I found a place where I can go sit in a class with my fellow classmates, talk about a certain issue without having a fear of being awake, you can't talk about that. You can't say a certain thing. And so, like standing up here, it's all so fast and like, Ricky said, yeah, I'm one of the people that lost sleep. I haven't, I haven't ate in a while.
Did you do that? <laughs> um, it's just, it's so important that sometimes it's just second nature. We don't think about sleeping. It's a lot more important than eating and sometimes sleeping. And it's just, we want everybody to support us, to have our back, and we will gladly welcome you guys in the arms of Tucson High, any other school, Pueblo, Choya, you name it. <coughs> and we just encourage all of you guys to speak out about this. And Thank you. I'm Juliana Yon. I'm a senior at Tucson High. Um, I've had all the classes except for Miss Grant's class because they told me that your class was full. <laughs> but um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for supporting us, students. We kind of don't have a voice when it comes politically unless we're 18, you know. But I want to thank you guys for supporting us. Um, I'm going to talk more on a personal level because me and my classmates could go on and on about political things and there's, <laughs> there's so much we could go on about, but I want to tell you guys, um, well, I've always been in the movement. My mom was like pregnant with me and I was like, we were going on marches, she would pull us on a wagon, you know, and I've always been involved, but like, I think I didn't. To me, it was something normal, so I didn't really get into depth with it, you know? Um, I was kind of a hypocrite at first. I was like, yeah, she got no power, but then when somebody dogged me out on the streets, I was like, you know what, forget you, and I'll call them out, you know? But, you know, when I got to these classes, um, reciting in a sketch, thinking in depth about everything we do, it, it changed me, it changed the person I was. I, I wasn't the best student, I wasn't the best person, um, but they did change me and they challenged me too. Um, Acosta was like, he would tell me, um, I ex I'm going to expect more of you. And I didn't hear that from any other teacher. To any other teacher, I was just another student, I was just another metric number. But now I feel like my teachers are like my tios and tias, you know? Um, so. When I started getting into these classes, I was like, I want to take this, I want to take that, but I did mess up my freshman and sophomore year. I am making up credits, and um, right now I should have been in a charter school. Right now I'm taking like nine classes just to stay at Tucson High to be in these classes. Um, so I am one of those people that lose sleep, that can't eat, and it hurts because these classes mean so much to me. And, I cried to Mr. Augusta. <laughs> I mean, these changed me so much. He's expecting more of me, something that none of my other teachers would have. <laughs> but um, I'm going to stay here, and I'm going to support my classmates, and I'm going to support the people that support me. And I thank you guys, because it is hard to stick up for ourselves. Um, yeah, that's it. I just want to let you guys know more on the personal level like, how it's changed me and how it's helped me. Hi, my name is Asiya. Um, I'm a Tucson High student and I am Pakistani and white. Um, my dad is from Kashmir and my mom is from Montana. So I have kind of like an odd place in the school system. Um, I've grown up in the school system with people telling me that I'm not going to go to college, I'm not going to graduate, I'm going to be a drug addict, apparently. So it's amazing to go from that to being told that I'm like an academic warrior and I can succeed, and that's just like what these classes have done for me. So it's just like, it's amazing to be in those classes and to feel like, you know, I can, I can move forward to college and stuff like that, and I don't know. Um, I just want to say that <laughs> We're not going to take this line down and um, keep your eye on Tucson High because we are, you know, ready to defend ethnic studies at whatever cost it takes. So, um, yeah, that's all I had to say. <laughs>
en la que tú eres mi otro yo, you are my enemy. Si te hago daño a ti, if I do harm to you, me hago daño a mí mismo, I do harm to myself. Si te amo y respeto, if I love and respect you, me amo y respeto yo, I love and respect myself. How you? So that's like a lot of the emotions. It's just a ton of pride. To this day, we have to endure hateful comments. I've been attacked and hated, hated, and as well as you. And you were the ones that made it all worth it. Thank you for being, you know, the maestro in this class. Like, mentoring us and just being you know that that father figure to some of us and you know I do have a father and mother you know I have my parents but they don't understand me like the way you do or any of these people do for someone that's felt so out of place for the majority of their life it's it feels good to to have a home you guys are the people who inspire me to try to be better Yes, for everything. The struggle hasn't ended, and it will never end. But it will continue because of us, our generation. When they try to take these classes away, it's something impossible. I want my little sisters to be able to come to this class and feel like I felt. They can't take it away. They can't. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.